How many people do you know who struggle with their health? Chances are, whether they show it or not, most of the people in your life do. And chances are, you're one of them. Whether you're dealing with anxiety, depression, endometriosis, acne, eczema, autoimmune, thyroid, Lyme, brain fog, fatigue, or any other symptom or condition, you're far from alone. Living with symptoms has become the new normal. So no more guessing games. It's time to get answers. Welcome to the Medical Medium Podcast. I'm Anthony William. Hey, everybody. We're talking about B12. It's on our radar more than ever before. Everyone and anyone is picking up B12 when they're at the health food store. Some take the shot, some take the patch. When we're told our B12 is too low, we send it down the hatch. No one knows if what they're using is a bad batch. I don't know about you, but the B12 game has tricked a lot of fools. They say, if you're getting it from your plant foods, you're being dumb. You need to get it from your meat. That's where it comes from, all in one lump sum. I'm not taking sides. The truth is, neither one knows where their B12 resides and why a lot of people get sick and die. There's a bigger story about B12 and you and me. In order to survive on planet Earth, we need to understand where we really get it from when we eat. Trick or treat, trick or treat, we don't get it from our meat. B12 is one of the most important nutrients of our time. Without it, we can't live long. It sits alongside of vitamin C in importance. If you have no vitamin C, you're going to be in trouble. Your body will fall apart. Same goes with B12. Without it, your body falls apart. We naturally get vitamin C from our foods. A little here, a little there, a little here, a little over there. Just enough to keep us alive. But B12's different. We naturally get it from our foods. A little here, a little there, a little B12 there, everywhere. But that B12 we're getting from our foods isn't the B12 that's keeping us alive. The difference between vitamin C and B12 is we have to create B12, we have to make it. We consume our food and then a special process occurs where something in our body manufactures B12. We don't assimilate or absorb B12 from our food. Instead, it's the opposite. Our body takes the food, deconstructs it, and creates B12 out of it. You're thinking, I'm already wrong. Because you know there's plenty of B12 in meat and animal products, so I'm off the mark. But if you hang out, what I'm going to tell you is going to blow your mind. Then you can make a decision on what you believe is true about B12 or not. A cow is grazing in the field. It's eating lots of grass. The grass ends up in the cow's intestinal tract, and microorganisms that were sitting on that grass in the field are mixed in with it and are now sitting inside the cow's intestinal tract. Those microorganisms are gobbling down enzymes and other nutrients that are in the raw grass. And then these microorganisms excrete. This excretion is the fundamental basis, the foundation and building blocks of B12. It's practically B12 a form of B12, but not complete. It's still quite useless until it goes to the liver in the cow. It can't be the healer B12 is. It's not usable. As that basic foundation of B12 heads to the liver, a magical miracle occurs. The liver converts it into a usable enzyme nutrient. And then it leaves the liver, enters the bloodstream, and goes on a mission throughout the body to keep the cow strong. But something unique happened to the B12. It has been designed for the cow only. The fingerprint of that B12 can only be useful for the cow. Just like that unique fingerprint would only be useful for a chicken, a lamb, pig, goat, 
quail, oyster, clam, crab, turkey, salmon, rabbit, and any other creature on the planet. Each creature has to create its own unique form of B12. If a fox eats a chicken, the B12 from that chicken won't give the fox usable B12 because the B12 was for the chicken. When the fox eats berries, grass, apples, and chews on exposed roots, which foxes do, the fox gets B12 because the fox creates it from the microorganisms on those foods. This can happen two months out of the year, and that's all the fox needs. If a bear eats a salmon, the bear isn't going to get usable B12 from the salmon, and doesn't. But when the bear eats honey or berries, like bears do, the bear can create usable B12 from the microorganisms on those foods. The key to understand is, the fox and the bear will create a usable B12 that can only work inside a fox or a bear. What about us? Where do we get our B12? We're sitting at the dinner table. We're eating a piece of chicken, maybe beef. Maybe it's salmon night. No worries. We're getting plenty of B12. Plenty of B12, so we're told. As we're chewing and swallowing our meat, it enters the stomach. Hydrochloric acid starts to break it down, and it makes its way into the duodenum and small intestinal tract, where bile starts to break down the fats. Any B12 that's in the meat or chicken is being discarded. Many other nutrients from the meat and chicken are not being discarded, but B12 is. Because B12 is a nutrient that has a fingerprint on it. It was created by the animal you're eating. The chicken sitting right on that dish, the fish, the cow, for the creature. Other nutrients in the meat weren't created by the animal for the animal. What no one realizes is we're a different creature. That B12 is foreign to us, so it gets thrown away. Because when it gets drawn into the liver, our liver can't work with it or do anything with it. It's useless. It gets urinated out. It can't convert because it was already converted by the chicken, cow, salmon, pig before. Can't do it twice. The B12 can only be converted once for the blueprint of that creature. It can't be refurbished. It's not like an old antique rocking chair. You can throw some stain on it and fix it up, and you're all set. Sit in it and just rock along. It can't be redone. In a nutshell, a chicken's B12 is for a chicken. It was created by the chicken for the chicken. The chicken's body never expected to be eaten someday by a human. The chicken's body doesn't say, I'm going to convert this B12 for the human body so that human can eat. It doesn't work like that. It would be great if it did, but it doesn't. Chickens don't create B12 for humans. Chicken bodies aren't trying to create a B12 that can be converted so a human can use it. It just doesn't happen. On another note, we can laugh at the plant-based and vegan people all we want. Laugh away. We can ask them, where are you going to get your B12? But the real question is, where does anyone get their B12? The reality is, there's hardly any plant-based or vegan people on the planet. It's just a drop of juice in that bucket that's filled with meat-eater juice. There's gallons of juice in that bucket, but the vegans are just one drop. Blood work results come in all day long around the world from meat eaters saying they're low on B12. Why? Why is that? That's funny. Is head scratching on that one? They're eating plenty of meat, plenty of chicken, but they're still low on B12. Anybody can be low on B12. That's why. And how about this? Why would a plant-based person who's been plant-based for 5 years, 10 years, 15, 20 years, who hasn't taken any B12 supplements the whole time, still have a normal level of B12. Yeah, I've seen it before out there. Yes, there are plant-based and vegan people low on B12 too, but there's plenty of plant-based and vegans that are B12 normal. But for some reason, the first thing that happens when you go plant-based is you get a great big smack in the face. Someone, somewhere, or something written someplace will put the fear of God in you. 
that you're not getting your B12, not a trace. It's an instant flaw in something you were excited about, a letdown. It's unfair. There's something wrong with your plant-based diet now. You were all excited, and now you got hit, sideswiped. You're already feeling weird to begin with, insecure. Many do. But just when you're getting comfortable, someone puts fear, doubt, and mistrust in what you're doing and muddies up the water. And they say, you're not getting your B12. I've seen people go through this. They get bad advice too. Wait, what? I just started my plant-based diet. What do I need to do? Wait, what? Eat meat? Then how am I going to go plant-based? Wait, what? I need to eat a cow liver? Um, I have to eat a lamb heart? I see that's on the list too. Where do I get a lamb heart? Oh, it says organic lamb heart. I like organic. Uh, it says there's collagen in it and B12. Because since I'm vegan, my skin is going to fall off of me. And I'm going to lose all my hair. Because I'm malnutritionist. Nutritioned? Where do I get these cow kidneys? Uh, huh. What's this turkey gizzard? Is there such thing as a turkey gizzard? Where do I find that? An organic turkey gizzard? Do I call someone? Uh, so I just eat one of these once in a while to get my collagen and B12? And anything else? My iron? Put them on my salad? It's really unfair. Because misinformation about getting your collagen or B12, especially B12, can send somebody running the other direction. Meat eaters, they don't have B12 either. They're not getting it from what they're eating. They're not getting collagen either from what they're eating. But they'll scare the dickens out of somebody who's plant-based and send them running for the hills. I've heard this one many times before. I started this new plant-based diet but I can't stay on it too long. I'm worried I'm going to go B12 deficient. If you know anything about me, you know that I'm not on any side of the aisle in any diet belief system land. This isn't an anti or pro anything stance. I'm not against plant-based diets or animal-based diets. I support them. I just want you to be able to fix what ails you and understanding B12 can help with that goal. So where do we get our B12? Our body creates it. And if our body can't create it because of a few things wrong that I'm going to talk about, then we can supplement with a usable form of B12 that our body can utilize. How does our body create B12? To start with, we need a special microorganism. Not one you can get from a probiotic, yogurt, kefir, fermented food, kombucha tea, or sauerkraut. Not even from soil-borne microorganisms that some products claim to possess. None of those microorganisms work. You can be flat busted and be 12, empty, regardless of how much yogurt you eat or have eaten throughout your life. There's only one variety, and it's on some living foods. Living foods are leafy greens, sprouts, herbs, fruits, wild foods, and vegetables in their growing state. These microorganisms are on the leaves, fruits, and vegetable skins in your garden. When you go into an apple orchard and walk up to a tree and reach out to grab an apple, sitting on that apple are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of tiny microscopic microorganisms. These are life-giving microorganisms. Right when your hand touches that apple, a relationship is bonded. Even if you get one bite, into that apple and swallow it. It's that powerful for restoring your B12 production. Maybe you have garden pots. You're growing some herbs or some kale and you pick from it every couple of days. That piece of kale has thousands of tiny microorganisms underneath the leaf. And if you look underneath it, you can see there's insects too, like aphids underneath that leaf. They eat the tiny little microorganisms you can't see. A relationship builds between you both. These organisms learn who you are. They pick up information as you're consuming them on a regular basis from the same source, like your garden or garden pots. 
in the nooks and crannies of leafy greens, herbs, and on the surface of fruits, vegetables, and wild foods, these microorganisms are camping out. They are what I termed elevated biotics because these microorganisms sit above the ground, high up on the leaves. They're elevated. They're the strongest health-promoting microorganisms that we have access to consume. They are elevated above the rest. Think about this. If you were really tiny, really tiny, tiny, you shrunk, got smaller, 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 the size of a flea, and then even smaller, smaller than a dust mite, and you happen to jump on a leaf out there, whether it be a blade of grass, a leaf of spinach, or maybe a cucumber, your world would look so different. You would see the craziest characters, different faces, different shapes and sizes, making different sounds and noises. The world we can't even imagine. Some of these characters are furry. Some of them are stick-like shaped and twiggy. Some of them are round and have little appendages sticking out of them. They don't move very fast and they tend to hug each other and cluster together. Sometimes they're just stuck to each other. It would be Alice in Wonderland times 10. And then if a raindrop came, they would all scream. They'd make noise like peepers and tree frogs do in the spring and summertime when the rain comes. But you can hear those. You can't put your ear to a kale leaf and hear these little buggers scream. It's a noise you can never hear unless you are as small as them. It's like a different universe, different world. One droplet of rain hits the leaves and sounds like a drum banging really loud. You would have to hold your ears, and it's like a tidal wave. The water almost drowns these little characters out, but they need the water in order to survive. They start drinking it up. As you're sitting there on the leaf with them, your hair gets wet from a raindrop. Trace minerals in the rainwater give all these little characters a boost. They get all happy. They start dancing around. Some of these characters get bounced off the leaf and land on the ground helpless, screaming, help, wishing they could get back on a leaf again. You lean over the edge of the leaf to look down, and you watch them there on the ground all upset. They have to find their way back up on a blade of grass and make a whole new group of friends. That's how this microorganism world works. But we don't think about this world. Health communities are focused on all the microorganisms that occur on dead things. Not on living things. They just care about microorganisms that like death. On rotting, decomposing vegetation and animal flesh, fermented foods. But these aren't the organisms that bring us life. They don't hurt us, but they don't help us. They don't create the B12. How do we get B12 deficient? There's no difference if you're plant-based, vegan, or animal-based. It's all the same with B12 deficiency. The two main problems for why people become deficient are a liver issue and a lack of elevated biotics, not probiotics. Let's cover the liver issue first. Everybody has an issue with their liver to some degree. We're born with weak livers, most of us. One way or another, everyone has something going on with their liver. Stagnant, sluggish, tired, stressed, dysfunctional, overburdened, toxic liver, even viral liver. Everybody's got a touch of this, some more than others. Anyone gaining weight when they don't want to has a touch of this. Anyone with a health symptom of any kind has a touch of this. No one has a perfect liver. It's one of the reasons B12 deficiency is rampant. But don't get too excited about this because I know what some of you are thinking. Your B12 is high or normal. It was tested. But that doesn't mean it's being utilized doesn't mean that you're not low in B12 somewhere else in your body like certain organs or your central nervous system. B12 numbers can be high, but your nervous system can be starving and low in B12. You can be high in B12 and you never take B12, but yet the numbers are high because the animal proteins that have B12 in them are showing up in your blood work. They're just suspended in your blood. Because B12 derived from animal products doesn't match up to our body systems. The fingerprint isn't for us. It's for the animal. So that B12 is not even usable by your body. 
it eventually gets flushed out, peed out. I'd rather see someone with high B12 levels while taking B12 or see someone with low B12 levels while taking B12. Being low in B12 in the bloodstream while on B12 supplementation is a sign it's being utilized. But yes, being high in B12 doesn't mean you should stop taking B12 because the B12 you're taking could still be utilized. And the other B12 in your bloodstream isn't being utilized because it's not an acceptable form. But yet, it's showing high in your blood test because it's trapped in the blood until it's flushed out of the body. The extra B12 you take can find its way into the nervous system at random times when it's needed. So it's still good to be on it. It's like an insurance policy, a backup plan. If your liver is not functioning properly, then the B12 floating in your bloodstream may not be converted, methylated, or usable because your liver has to baptize it, has to baptize the B12, has to bless it, has to convert it with your own blueprint. If it doesn't, then it just floats around and your central nervous system, your brain can't drink it up. It's like being in a desert, you see water everywhere and you're dying of thirst, but you can't drink it because it's filled with parasites. Or it's like being on a ship in the ocean and the captain says, we're out of fresh water, nowhere to go from here. Everyone starts drinking salt water and they die. A prime example of a big mistake made all these decades is the old B12 shot you get at the doctor's office or hospital. It's synthetic B12 with bad preservatives and it doesn't even work. It's a nothing shot, shot of nothing. But when your B12 levels get checked after you get those shots and your B12 is up, according to your blood work, they say you're all free and clear, looks good. What's really happening is you're not getting any of that B12. It's dead B12. It looks good, seems good, looks good on the blood work, but it's dead. It's like a shiny new car. You open the hood, there's no engine inside. You've been fooled. The B12 in that shot can't even be converted to usable B12 in your body. A real big problem about B12 shots is that they're being injected from the outside of the body and not directly into the vein. You can become allergic to B12 that way. This is a massive blunder by the medical industry. That's why some people are B12 sensitive or even claim to be allergic to B12. An antibody can be created against B12 because when something is injected from the outside of the body, it's seen as a foreign invader. Your immune system creates an antibody to what was injected in you. But don't worry, it would take a lot of B12 shots for this to happen, a lot of them. And even if this did happen, which it does to people, the antibody would be against the synthetic B12 and not the good quality non-synthetic B12. The best B12 supplementation is non-synthetic oral and having it go through the intestinal tract. That's the best pathway for the liver to receive it and send it through the bloodstream so your nervous system can receive it too. The second main reason for B12 deficiency is people are not getting enough elevated biotics, the microorganisms we talked about throughout their lives. If you eat one apple off a tree or one piece of kale or other leafy green, or grow some sprouts on your kitchen counter, or an herb like parsley out of your garden pots, you just consume these elevated biotics, and it could get you by a long time, depending on other factors involved in your life. But if you scrub the surfaces of these foods to the point where the elevated biotics were scrubbed off, these microorganisms would be gone, down the drain. You won't receive the benefits from these B12-producing microorganisms but you still get the benefits of the amazing fruits, leafy greens, herbs, sprouts, wild foods, and vegetables, and that counts. But one day, one moment, or time in your life where you picked a handful of berries, you got the elevated biotics. You got them, the microorganisms. And they stay in there for quite a while before you put some new ones in. The more the better, though. The elevated biotics that you consume nest down deep inside the ileum, right after the small intestinal tract, in the beginning of the colon. That's your transfer switch. Time stands still there for these microorganisms. They're protected. If the conditions are right, the right temperature, the right pH, the ileum needs also the right food, too, for them to eat. And if all these needs are met, these microorganisms can take residence there longer term. That's their main location. 
these elevated biotics feed off of plant matter and then excrete the coenzyme B12 in its purest form. From there, it goes to only one place, the paddock portal highway up to the liver. And then the liver converts some of it and then stores the rest. A good liver means it stores away lots of B12 for a rainy day, times of struggle and no living foods to be found. The converted B12 goes back into the bloodstream to be absorbed by every cell in the body, most importantly, the brain and nervous system. How does the B12 get into your cells? It binds onto glucose. Glucose, sugar of all things. The B12 attaches itself to sugar. Insulin opens up the cells. That sugar enters the cells. And you got B12 now entering into the nerve cells and every other cell in the body. That's okay if you're someone that doesn't have an opportunity to receive these microorganisms into your body. You live in a place where there's no fresh picked produce. To get these microorganisms, someday you might be able to pick fresh living produce and eat it straight from the tree, vine, garden, or grow some alfalfa or broccoli sprouts on your kitchen counter. At least there's B12 supplementation, which can get you by. It's a great start without having microorganisms. In this day and age, we need support with all we're up against. We need our B12. With emotional hardships like betrayal, broken trust, broken relationships, breakups, divorces, emotional stress, mental abuse, getting let down, being judged, losses, confrontations, we need our B12. With health symptoms and conditions caused by toxic heavy metals and pathogens, we need our B12. With our adrenal glands getting pushed to the edge from ups and downs, we need our B12. If we're doing coffee, chocolate, matcha tea, or caffeine of any kind, killing our neurotransmitters, losing our trace minerals, vitamins, and nutrients from caffeine stripping it all away over the years, we need our B12. And when we're adding our apple cider vinegar to our diet and other vinegars or hidden MSG, such as nutritional yeast, we're adding natural flavors, natural flavorings in our foods. That's MSG right there. Or citric acid, not from citrus, the bad stuff. Whey protein powder, bentonite clay, collagen, colostrum, and other unhelpful trendy products. We need our B12. When we're eating too much fat, disguised as protein, drinking alcohol, not sleeping enough, intermittent fasting the wrong way, over-exercising, traveling a lot, radiation exposure, dental work, not getting enough sun, we need our B12. When we get exposed to pesticides, herbicides, and fungicides, rodenticides, DDT, floating in the air, chemical fertilizers, on lawns and around buildings, air fresheners and scented candles, perfumes, colognes, and chemtrails. We need our B12. With all these stress factors, our liver gets beaten down. Our ileum gets beaten down. Our nervous system gets put under tremendous stress and gets inflamed. Our brain burns out. Our neurotransmitters weaken. And our adrenal glands get pushed to their limit. And we need the B12 supplementation. Many of these factors and triggers in our life all determine how much B12 we use, how much B12 we need, and how we produce it, and how it gets distributed throughout the body. B12's main purpose, the most important one, is for the nerves, restoring our nerves. Our nerves take the most wear and tear out of anything in our body because of what we're up against in today's world. B12, once created and converted, has a personal signature within it just for you. Human B12 is human B12, but the B12 that humans create is still different for each person. Your B12 is your B12, but yet usable by anybody in the human species. A blood transfusion that has B12 from elevated biotics, the microorganisms that were in that person's ileum, will still work for another person. Not perfectly, but still be usable. But a cow's B12 won't be usable at all. It won't work for a human. Your blood lab results may say you have B12, but if it's all the B12 derived from animal products you're eating, then it's useless. If you're plant-based and your blood lab results say you have B12 and you're taking the wrong supplement, it may not be usable either, like a synthetic B12 supplement, one that can't be converted by the liver or effective on its own. B12 
because we don't have control over much of our environment and circumstances, we can't gauge how much B12 is in us, inaccessible or not, even if B12 numbers look good on the blood work. So it's best to always play it safe using supplementation whenever possible. Trick or treat. We'll start with B12 tricks. Nutritional yeast. It's a great one. What's the best way to trick out vegans and plant basers? Tell them they get no B12 in the first place and then try to sell them an addictive food substance with added synthetic B12, nutritional yeast. Almost all plant-based vegan people turn plant-based vegan because they're sick. The other small portion, because of cruelty to animals. The irony is, nutritional yeast keeps plant-basers and vegans sick, or at least makes them sick again someday. We're back to square one. Your body can't convert and utilize the B12 in nutritional yeast. It just flushes it out of the body. Another B12 trick is Corella. Corella has such very low amounts of B12 that it doesn't outweigh all the bad Corella does. For one, it doesn't remove toxic heavy metals, and if it manages to dislodge toxic heavy metals a little bit, it quickly drops them back down to a new location, causing an acceleration of a condition or disease. Also, Corella could come with a present. Many batches have bad bacteria in them, and has caused a lot of past harm to people's intestinal tracts and lives. The B12 in Corella was already blueprinted for the algae and isn't even a complete B12. It's a partial B12 and has no benefits. Corella industry survives on tricking vegans out. To this day, it still does. Okay, treat. Let's go there now. There is one outside food source that's loaded with B12, and this B12 is accepted by our bodies. We absorb and utilize every bit of it. Humans can thrive on this B12. Some might feel this is a tasty food, and some might be yucked out. Would you like to know a food I'm talking about? Well, it's a food group, and it's really yummy. It's a yummy treat. It's insects and earthworms. I don't personally eat them for my B12, but some enjoy insects and worms. Grasshoppers, crickets, mealworms, moths, ants, and all good old, good old earthworms and night crawlers. Another treat is the right kind of supplementation. Easy to take. Methylcobalamin and adenosylcobalamin. Together, they make the perfect combination to supplement your B12 deficiency and support your B12 needs. Methylcobalamin is good for your eyes, your hearing, your heart, your nervous system, your adrenals. Adenosylcobalamin is good for your central nervous system, your spleen, pancreas, liver, endocrine system. One can't live without the other. Every day, I'm always asked, what B12 is best? Which one do I use? The answer is always the same. One without preservatives, fillers, MSG, natural flavors, alcohol, casea gum, citric acid, or any other stuff like that. You can check out my supplement directory at medicalmedium.com for the highest quality medicinals. These are the ones I trust for myself, my family, and my friends for the best opportunity in healing. At least you know this resource is here for you in case you need it. Methacobalamin and adenosylcobalamin work as a team to help with the triggers you're up against, the emotional hardships, and the physical struggles. They work in combination to battle obstacles together. One form of B12 can be more useful than another at any given time. It's a combined coenzyme power. The B12 deficiency is an epidemic and growing at an alarming speed without us realizing it. In our day and age, B12 is dearly needed in these desperate times. Our B12 reserves are diminishing as each generation goes by, eventually taking us to a place where it will be hard for the human race to thrive. Where would we be if B12 didn't exist within us and outside of us. What counts is that we have B12 in our hands and in our world right now. It's part of the gift of life, something that should never be taken for granted. When someone judges us and disregards us, looking straight in our eyes, at the same time ignoring us, overestimating how much they know about us and the other person who sits alongside us 
only to find out this whole time that they were wrong in the end. And it turns out we were their only true friend and the very person that can help them transcend. If we find this confusing, see it as a lesson to how B12 is not worth losing. Without it, what could come is a serious mental bruising, sending people down a rabbit hole against their own choosing, practically limiting all their chances of finally healing, only to lose them down a different path when they just needed some soothing. But yet B12 became a rope to pull them out of a downslope. When used in the right way, it could bring a tremendous amount of hope as B12 enters the inner lobe. In the future day and age, this nutrient will be one of the very things that saves the human race, while the system hides it without a trace, holds us back from using it, changes its composition, synthesizes it so it falls from grace. Withholding it from the ones that need it the most, the ones that are battling the darkness as it acts like their host, no joke. The goal, to control the people as they burn their minds out, looking down at the square rectangle lit up handle, losing more B12 every time they dial out, radiation in their hand as their cell towers dry them out, causing a neurotransmitter B12 drought, shifting their brain, making it hard to stay sane, causing them to have enormous self-doubt, giving the medical industry more money than ever before in clout. Without it, we are nothing. Does it matter if you thought you were somebody or something? If we don't get a refill throughout our busy lives, we can tank. Our bodies become weak. It's already happened to many. What happened to them could happen to you. They sank. No thanks. We're not in this place now. This powerhouse hasn't been disallowed. It's okay enough not to do a B12 bow. But the time is coming, nobody knew. It's leaving us behind, pushing us forward, driving us through. Don't get too comfortable, it's on its way, it's coming soon towards us, it's true. You hear the big clock strike 12, the number chosen for a powerhouse of the nutritional world. Sometimes it only takes one douse. It slows down time for human life itself, helping us to live longer and gives us a better life while sustaining ourselves. The red liquid can be a life savior, allowing us to see and feel so much better, especially when our sickness pushes our behavior. Because it can be so hard here, we need every little thing to bring us to the next tier. We need a favor. When we give our body what it needs, something miraculous can happen. A reigniting is so worth fighting for, putting our troubles behind us, sending them out the door. A healing can happen, allowing us to be free and soar. It can't be ignored. You can rise out of the ashes. See, I believe in you. And I know you can heal.